work that Les Herday is doing. And like many of our speakers tonight, I have had the pleasure of being involved in the trust and, and working as one of the trustees at some point. But as we look at the category Women in Business, I have a few little bits that I want to share. The first point is, women are good at business. Give yourselves a round of applause. Women are good at business. If anyone tells you differently, you just remember the people that have been nominated tonight and the people that have won, or the individual that wins overall. But women are good in business. Women in business are good for Leicester. <laughs> Women in business are good for the UK economy. So I know I'm definitely going to run over. But can all the <laughs> women who run a business put their hands up just quickly? There are a lot of you here. So I want to encourage you to continue and be inspired. As the National Chair of Women in, Bus uh, Women in Management, which is a part of the Chartered Management Institute, and the director of my own company, I have the pleasure of seeing what women do in business across England, Scotland, and Wales. And I will tell you, when the judges um, looked at the nominations made, Leicester, for me, shone brightly. You know, the first sentence I have here is that women in business in Leicester are shining examples of integrity, creativity, innovation, business acumen, determination, and inspiration. And this is why we need to celebrate the women in business in our county and in our city. If we don't do it, nobody else will. Okay, so let's work on celebrating what we do. You know, once upon a time, just to tell you a little story. Once upon a time, being a girl or being a woman was seen as a disadvantage. Having children was seen as something that would hold you back. But let me share with you, the women who were nominated, and every single woman that was nominated should be proud of the fact that she has been nominated and should be proud that by being nominated, her peers are saying, you are an inspiration. So, people who think that being a woman or having children is something to hinder you, they are missing out on seeing what can be uh, achieved and how much we can benefit from 51% of the UK population. Women make up 51% of the UK population. So if we're not supporting what we women do, we are missing out, and our country is missing out as a whole. Women are also responsible for making um, the bulk of the decisions around what gets bought in the house. Yeah? Anybody agreeing with me on that? Yeah. Do you know the five years, five years leading up to April this year, the number of women millionaires has increased in the UK by 40%. <laughs> and this is why we continue to celebrate what women have done in Leicester. So that's a surprise to many of us. When I read that, I was, I was surprised because we don't share this enough. But we are, we are making more than a start tonight by celebrating our nominees. The, the four individuals who were chosen for as runners-up, I'll list their names out and if they can make their way up. Sanjaya Raka. Uh, not here tonight. 
Um, but she has been nominated, so we will celebrate her um, accomplishments. I just want to run through some of the things that these ladies have achieved. Um, Sanjaya, she has been described by her nominee, and I will mention the individuals who nominated these, these ladies, because I think it's important to do that as well. Sanjaya was uh, nominated by Mike Preston. Well done, Mike. Hope you're here tonight. And Sanjaya was um, described as a super mother, a super mother of four who created her business, Lighter Life, like many other women, she created her business from nothing. She has given support to hundreds of women and men in their quest to improve their quality of their health, their health, and to gain greater self-worth. She is among the top 10 national Lighter Life counsellors in the UK, and the only one outside London and the Hung Counties. I am going to share about Deborah, although she's not here. So Deborah Melnoshenko was um, nominated by her husband Paul, well I'm assuming, I'm making an assumption, um, by Paul Melnoshenko. And Deborah started an online um, eBay bi uh, business. She went to America and she saw um, arts and craft being sold there and felt that was a gap in the market here in England. And she started an online business. And now she has her own website and she also has a, a, a bricks and mortar building as well. There's so much about each of the nominees that I could share that will take us far too long. But well done to Deborah. I'm sure she will, she will hear about this. <laughs> and we have Jamini Patel. Jamini has always loved beauty, so she went with what she liked and started 18 years ago. She started a, um, a beauty salon. She got qualifications as a beauty therapist, a hairdresser and a nail technician. And what she realised that was that Asian women were struggling to get their beauty needs um, met. And some of, some of this struggle was around a culture and around language. So she did something about it and started a business that helped Asian men and women to get the beauty needs that they felt they needed. Now, if you have a female member of your family, or you're sitting next to a female, you know that beauty is hugely important to us and how we look affects how we feel. So seeing a gap in the market and doing something about it is uh, tremendously the right thing to do where business is concerned, you look for a gap in the market. Her work has been recognised uh, nationally. In two, 2007, she received the UK Salon of the Year Award. Her makeup, um, her, she was the, the uh, makeup artist for B Sky B's photo shoot for one of their newsreaders. She was a makeup artist for Miss Sri Lanka. Um, various uh, magazines has had her work in. So she has pushed her business and done extremely well. So well done. Yeah. Saeed started her business, and when she started her business, she decided to buy a building to run her business from. And this was in 2006. She, she, her business is um, in law, so she started a law business, initially focusing on conveyancing, but now she provides services that include debt collection, matrimonial matters, wills, immigration, dispute resolution, and child abduction. When she started her business, she was a single parent with a 13-year-old son. Now she employs three members of staff, offers law internship and work experience opportunities. What she did with her build it, business, uh, business and her building was to convert the downstairs so that it is now uh, rented out as a conference room. She also offers um, office space for other businesses to rent. So this is someone looking at what she has and think, thinking, how can I use this to the best of my ability? Again, she encourages us, us and inspires us to be forward thinking and not to just settle for what you have now, but look to see, plan for the future, 
and prepare with what you have. So, well done. Thank you. Um, which, which person to choose overall, because all of the candidates were absolutely amazing. I do want to read a little bit about this candidate, so I'm going to be naughty and start reading first. If you know me, you know that comes with the territory. The individual that we chose, the judges, the three of us chose um, as the winner, impressed us because she has done so much for so long. You see, success, especially in the business field, is not only about making a financial profit, and I'd be the first one to put my hands up to say that is hugely important, and that's why most of us go into business, because we want to make some dosh. But according to her nomination, she demonstrated a whole heap of other attributes that no matter how big or small your business, these attributes are necessary to make your business a success. According to the, nom the person that nominated her, they said she doesn't only talk the talk, but she walks the walk. In other words, she leads by example. And I want to read a story and then I will tell you who she is. And this is taken directly from the nomination. Over 16 years ago, she met two women, this is an example of what she's done. She met two women who had just been made redundant. One of these ladies was in her early 50s, the other was in her early 40s. They had previously gone to another business support agency and were told that women at their age had to accept that they would not find another job and that they should go home and be quiet little women. They went to see this lady, so someone chuckling behind there, she went to see this person who worked with, with them to figure out what their skills were and what they wanted to do. Now at the time they were thinking, oh we just want to make a modest income. Now this two woman cooperative that she inspired now employs 110 people, has a turnover in excess of a million pounds a year. Wow. They, have been, they have been nationally recognised and have won national awards. They've even been to number 10 Downing Street to tell the, the Prime Minister how to do it. <laughs> and, and every time they've been asked about their success, this lady's name has been in the first sentence. So the winner of Women in Business 2010 is Dorothy Francis. <laughs> to be a part of what we are doing here in Leicester. But that pleasure is outshone by the wonderful work that these ladies and every other nominee is doing. Well done to all of you. 